Welcome to this tutorial on how to implement association rules or how to look for association rules, find association rules in Rapid Miner. And today, so to begin with, uh, what I am going to be working with is uh, the clothing store data set. And let's just have a quick look at what we're dealing with. So what we're dealing with is data on 20 different transactions. So we have a transaction ID and we simply have different columns for a different category of goods um, that tell us about whether uh, they were present in a given transaction. So in the rows we have those transactions. So for instance, uh, first transaction ID, what happened? Well, somebody uh, he or she bought a blues, okay, and nothing else was bought. Second transaction, somebody was buying shoes, a skirt, and a t-shirt. Third transaction, somebody was buying a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. And so what's the idea? Well, we have all this data. Often uh, there's plenty of transaction data to, to look at. And uh, part of the idea for us here today is to figure out what goes with what. Okay, establish associations. So that once we establish associations, for instance, somebody that buys shorts may always buy shoes, um, then we could uh, establish or create strategies in order to increase our sales, right? Upselling or cross-selling, so we, we could place, um, if we know that people buying shorts are likely to buy shoes, we could play the shoes next to the shorts, you know, to make it easy for them and to increase the likelihood for another completed sale. Or if we know it would be a cross sale. If we know somebody is likely to buy shoes after buying shorts, well, we could try and place a particular expensive pair of shoes that maybe otherwise uh, people wouldn't be as likely to buy next to the shorts, again, to try and, and get them to actually complete that sale. So that's the idea. Um, and in order to get to those types of insights, um, we need to run a couple of things. So we've got our data set here. Uh, first thing we need to do is um, create um, a set of um, observations, or rather data, um, or what's called a frequent set. Um, which will tell us how many of these uh, items go together. What are the relationships between those different items? So FB, the FB growth operator will create this frequent uh, set for us and we'll take a look at that in a second. And um, what goes out here is also the same example set that goes in. Now um, we have a problem here which is that uh, if we click on it, it tells us regular attributes must be of type nominal. So this operator, or it's if we click right click, um, it doesn't actually show us to us here as others, but uh, the problem is that it doesn't accept just any type of data input. And what we have here, if we look at our clothing store, we have them all uh, as zero one, so this is an integer data type, and what the operator wants is basically a nominal type. Um, and so, what we can do is simply to convert uh, numerical to binomial, solve this problem. Okay, so we'll drag that in here, and we'll say, please, uh, dummy code all of our different variables. So what this will do we can look at that uh, step by step as well. It's simply, let's rerun it from the beginning, convert all of these zero ones, if it works out, into true and false. Okay, so now we have them as binomial data type, and that's exactly what this operator FPCROS requires. So the error or problem went away. Okay, so <clears throat> If we go back to our uh, operator here, and I'll just remove those breakpoints, what we need to specify uh, in our case uh, is really just 
one thing. So first thing we want to do is actually deselect this find minimum number of item sets. We do not need that. And uh, the only thing that we're going to play around with really is what's called support. And that's telling us about the frequency um, of different items or individual items that occur uh, together. So for individual items, it's simply the actual frequency or probability rather. Um, and for a group of items, it's the probability of that union of that group of items um, to occur. Okay, so if we run this, what we will get is nothing. Why didn't we get anything? Uh, we get our example sets, but we didn't get any frequent item sets. Well, that's because our support is by default incredibly high. So we could uh, lower this, let's say to uh, 50, or we can go real low into 20% 20, 20 for now. We'll see what happens. So we run this again. And now uh, we see that the highest support that we have in our data set is actually at 70%. And if we go down to 20% in order to create these frequent item sets, uh, we get uh, 17 different sets. To begin with, what we get is, uh, first of all, genes appears to be the most common item in our uh, basket. So <clears throat> there's 70% um, of the transactions include genes. Okay, that's what it tells us. 70% also include t-shirts, 50% include shoes, 30% include skirts, and then there are some common item sets, okay? So all this is telling us at this point is um, there's a 35% uh, chance of jeans and shoes, 25% chance of jeans and shorts, okay? So this is good, but it actually uh, is not what we want yet. Uh, we do not uh, receive here except for our data set as well as these item sets. Um, we don't receive any association rules. And so in order to get those, all we need to do is add um, that operator, create association rules, and if we just drop it in for here, for a second we'll have a look at what it requires. So. What it wants is um, the frequent item sets. That's what goes into the input here and what comes out are the association rules as well as uh, the frequent item sets if we want to pass them through. And where do we get the frequent item sets from? Well, right here. And instead of just uh, reporting them, we'll pass them to this operator. So now it's going to get those frequent item sets and what we want other rules and we'll keep passing those frequent item sets through as well. Now what we get to play with here is after we have first uh, set this initial constraint of a minimum support, which right now is pretty low, but uh, as we saw to begin with the standard 95% uh, was, uh, was way too high uh, for us to get any results with our data set. And so after we set that support, what the create association rules operator will do, it will also only report those association rules that have a minimum uh, confidence level. Confidence uh, being sort of the conditional probability if you bought uh, jeans, what is the actual probability of you also buying um, another item. And of course, we generally want this to be as high as possible but maybe this is also a bit too high of a threshold for us to work with at first. So we can set this down at, say, to 50% for now and see what happens. And simply run it. Okay, so here we're getting the same frequent item sets as just before. So there's nothing new here. But what we also get next to, again, our data set are the actual association rules, and this is really the meat, uh, the most important thing we're interested in here. First of all, we see that there's a bunch of rules that have been created, and if we move over here, we have uh, basically uh, 
a premise here, which is sort of the antecedent. If somebody buys jeans and shoes, how likely is he to buy shorts? That's the conclusion. That's what we're interested in. Okay, so we've got a bunch of different rules here. Um, and we have a bunch of different metrics um, uh, to, to describe those rules and to make judgments about those rules. And what we're really going to be looking at is support, confidence, and lift. Okay, but maybe the first thing we could do here is we could just sort this, uh, we just sort this based on a support. And as we'll see, um, given our constraints of creating rules that have at least a certain amount of support, which was pretty low, as well as at least a certain amount of confidence, uh, we get all these different rules. And if we sort them by support, um, the first thing we get is t-shirts and shoes. Okay, what does that mean? How do we read this rule? Well, that's our rule number 13. What it tells us is, okay, what's if somebody bought a t-shirt, what's the actual likelihood that he'll also buy shoes? And again, this is what we're interested in at the end of the day. Uh, if it turns out to be really high, we may want to position some shoes next to the t-shirts, okay, to cross-sell. So in this case, if somebody bought t-shirts, what's the likelihood that he buys shoes? That's our confidence. That's basically um, the conditional probability of uh, shoes, provided that somebody also bought a t-shirt. Okay, the first thing we get is support, and support really just tells us that uh, uh, there's a 50% likelihood uh, that these two are bought together in our data. Um, so they occur 50% with a likelihood of 50% um, as a union. Now, uh, that's telling us about how big of a how big of a set we're dealing with, but we're really more interested in confidence um, in the sense that it tells us, uh, well, what's the actual probability of somebody getting or buying shoes given that he bought a t-shirt? And the last thing uh, that we're interested in also is lift. And lift, uh, put simply, uh, tells us what we want uh, our, our values greater than one uh, mainly. Um, it gives us an idea. If it's one, then our uh, rule doesn't help us much because then um, basically it's something that we would expect at random. So in the first case, assuming that this wouldn't be 1.429, which is good news, so it tells us that this rule uh, is helpful um, in the sense that this is not something that we would just expect at random. Um, it could be that uh, t-shirts and shoes generally are very, very popular products. And so we have a lot of t-shirt and shoes purchases, in which case um, our confidence measure could really be deceiving. Um, but we'll talk more about this in class. It could turn out to be of little use, in other words. Um, but that's essentially what Lyft gives us. Lyft tells us that if it's one, then basically this rule is of, of little use to us because it's probably catching a pattern that, uh, in this case, shoes and jeans are both very popular items uh, and so independently occur a lot. And so we would expect, obviously, them also to occur together. Um, and that's not a, a, a much value to us then. But uh, what we're looking for is we look for a great support, meaning as high as possible, uh, which to begin with tells us uh, that this happens very frequent or very infrequent. Then we look at confidence, which basically tells us uh, how much confidence do we have in this rule, and are the words saying how likely is it that somebody buys shoes after, they, after actually buying a t-shirt, so it's the conditional probability. And then lastly, we look at lift and want it to be uh, different from one. Uh, most often, it would be a positive, um, which would then tell us that this is a very useful rule. Um, and that's it for now. I'm going to leave it here, and we'll talk about uh, this in more detail in class. Uh, so that's how we create association rules, uh, beginning with our data set, 
uh, having to make a simple conversion here so that we can work with the operator that requires nominal uh, attributes, uh, which first only gave us the frequent sets and which we then also used to create association rules, allowing us to get a better idea of what goes with what, what's the likelihood of somebody buying shoes after he bought t-shirts, would we expect that uh, to happen at random just because shoes and t-shirts are very popular overall or does it tell us something that we can exploit as in this case it seems to suggest for cross-selling so um, people that bought t-shirts um, are actually uh, likely to buy shoes and so we would uh, pair them or uh, arrange them in close proximity in our store to increase the likelihood of, of cross-selling those products.